Nikki Sinden is addicted to fishing. Whether it's straylining for big snapper, jigging for kingfish, spearfishing or diving, she loves it all and is on a constant quest to learn more. Join her each week as she road trips around the country, tracking down New Zealand's local fishing legends as they share their stories. Tapping into their local knowledge and showcasing their tips, tricks and techniques. Hi, I'm Nikki and welcome to ADOS Addicted to Fishing. For this week we're heading to the far north, to the Bay of Islands, a little town called Russell. We've tracked down a very special fishing legend this week and he's going to take us out to the deep blue sea to see what we can find. We're headed to Russell, a four hour drive north of Auckland. Russell is situated in an area in the north of New Zealand called the Bay of Islands. Russell has a rich fishing heritage, made famous by the likes of writer and fishing legend Zane Grey, who fished these waters in the 1920s. Today, enthusiasts come from all over the world in pursuit of big game fish. We're here to try and catch a marlin, and we've enlisted the help of local fishing legend, Jeff Stone. I just, I just like the laid back life in Russell, and, um, and just, just taking life easy. I've never been one that's uh, needed a lot of um, capital assets. Um, that's, that's why it's been easier to have two divorces and, uh, and give the assets away. But, uh, you know, as long as I've got enough money in the bank to keep me fishing and a bit of security, it really doesn't matter. And, and here I am living in a beautiful, beautiful part of New Zealand. It's peaceful, uh, it's safe, and I've got um, some of the world's best fishing right on my doorstep plenty of variety in the fishing I can do. I'm quite keen to take you out for a, a bit of a fish tomorrow. It'll be, be a lot of fun. I think what we ought to do is to, to go out and see if we can catch a marlin and um, not want to ask people to do a lot of hard work. If it's a nice day, I'd like to see us have a, a, a crack at perhaps a half hooker for something for tea tomorrow night. Um, see if we can do it in 140. But we, of course, we start the, the day off with a wonderful job of going out to catch some baits. We're just getting some uh, some marlin lollipops, otherwise known as jack mackerels. Chucking them in the live bait tank, and we're going to troll them around really slowly, try and get some marlin. Jack mackerel are plentiful in most harbours around New Zealand, and are easily caught using sabiki flies. Once caught, it is important to keep them healthy in a live bait tank with fresh, circulating water. If we become notable, we're probably more notorious than notable for what's happened up here and we've come to people's attention with the boat and, and what we've been doing, it's because of Broadbill. I guess it really came to notice what we were doing when we caught the world record in 2002, 369 kilos. But it, it really, really took off about two or three years ago. Now, where we were up at places we were fishing the garden patch on our own for about the first five or six years, uh, now you go up there and there's 15 to 20 boats lined up. It's quite, quite hilarious, but they're quite rewarding. I guess the thing that keeps me fishing now is the, uh, the fact that I've, I've, I've caught a lot of fish, but it, it's, it's owning a charter boat, it's a great experience to um, share. Uh, you, you, you love the fishing with other people. Well done. Thank you very much. 180 kilos. Okay. Very good fish. Okay. Very good. Nice. Thank you. Oh. And uh, of course, uh, in Russell, a lot of the people we get um, are not only New Zealanders who've never fished before, but we get experienced anglers from overseas who've got something different, different stories to tell. There's nothing like the astonishment on the face of a, uh, an Englishman. Um, when he's caught a 74 centimetre kingfish and you take it off the hook and throw, him, throw it back and 
tell them it's undersized. When marlin fishing, having a variety of bait options on board is important. We have jack mackerel, but now it's time to go and see what else we can get. Uh, we're heading out towards the mouth of the bay, and we're going to put a um, skippy tackle on. See if we can get a car white whale rock, and if not, we'll start our channel out towards the 100 metre line. Get a skippy, chuck it in the tuna tube, and then we're ready to start uh, baiting as soon as we see what we want. We're just about to trawl across the nine pin trench. We've got a couple of skirts out. We're hoping to get some kawaii. We've also got a couple of bungees out for some skippies just in case. Oh, yeah. Just don't let a kingfish eat it while you're pulling it in. Okay, that's all we need. It's given us some op given us some options. Straight in the tank. Coming up, we put out some liveies to see if we can entice a bite from the big one. This week, we're in the Bay of Islands hunting that elusive marlin fishing with legendary skipper Jeff Stone. We've been starting to experiment out there with uh, towing, actually towing Jack Mack. A lot of the guys have been uh, drifting with them out here, but we've started to experiment a bit with towing Jack Mack at the same time as we've been towing a, um, a skipper to give the uh, marlin two optional baits. So uh, it'd be nice to do that for a little bit. Preserving life of the live bait for as long as possible means a much better chance of getting that bite. By bridle rigging the bait as Jeff is doing here, you cause minimal physical damage to the delicate fish and at the same time create a more hydrodynamic live bait that will swim better behind a trolling boat, keeping the bait alive for longer. Even though we have a jack mackerel out there rigged up and fishing for marlin, we still need a nice skipjack tuna to round out our bait selection. Okay, so we've got the hand line out. We just hooked up to a skippy. Oh, we've got two. Just pulling them in. We're going to chuck them in the tuna tubes. Oh! So this was a really nice skippy, but we uh, had a bit of an inquiry from the tax man. So we're going to chuck out some more bungees and um, get a few more because I have a feeling that the marlin, no marlin's going to want this one. to keep the skippies alive and we chuck them in there, it keeps them alive and then we use them as live bait. Handlining tuna to the boat is a great method for catching baits while trolling. It means that you can maintain trolling speeds and continue marlin fishing while bringing in the skippies. Like the jack mackerel, it is important to rig your tuna carefully. Jeff shows us how to bridle rig a tuna. We always use the towel to keep the fish nice and protected from the deck so it's not getting... Normally what I do is forget where I put the needle. <laughs> so you go straight over through the eyes? Through the eyes, in front of the eyes, yep. Around. A bit of extra through there. A couple of twists on this. Yeah. With a circle hook, try and get it up the front of the hook because you want to pull the hook in that way. You drop him in the water, wait till he settles down and then we'll put him on the downrigger. A downrigger uses a large weight to help keep the bait down at a predetermined depth. We've spent all morning fishing for baits and with our bait tanks full and a variety of baits deployed, there's nothing much left to do. With marlin fishing, a lot of the work is in the preparation and then all that there is to do is hurry up and wait. So Jeff, what's your game plan for today? Talk me through it. 
Well, we're going to, uh, well, now that we've finally got baits and uh, we're up and ready, we've got baits of all descriptions down there ready to go. Yeah. But uh, really looking to see, have, have a bit of a look around out here, see what life's, life's on the water like, um, life in the water, keeping our eye out. We've got the fish alarms on. Um, and, and we'll just have a bit of a cruise around until we think we see the most likely area. Then we'll put some live baits in the water. What we've got at the moment, we've got a skippy in the tuna tube. He's uh, all rigged and ready to drop back. Cool. We've got two teasers out running close in, both big purple lures at the back end, so they should be easy to switch the skippy onto them. Yeah. And we've got a couple of small lures on the outside, just in case we get a marlin comes in and decides it wants to have a crack. So how deep are we at the moment? At the moment we are in about uh, 130, 140. This seems to be the general area where people have been uh, seeing fish. Uh, um, and it hasn't, while they've been seeing fish, there hasn't been a, a lot getting caught. That's how we're keen to come out, run some smaller lures, do something a little bit different. Uh, and then uh, when we go towing baits, we'll obviously tow a, a skippy. And then we're going to tow some small baits on 200 pound. Yeah. And, um, just to see whether perhaps uh, a smaller bait, lighter tackle, smaller hooks, might entice the fish that have been a bit reluctant to take into doing something for us. When you're trolling for marlin, um what would you recommend to our viewers to do? I mean, do you just troll in a straight line? Is there a specific, like, do you go into the wind? What's, what's, can you explain to them what you normally do and what's the most likely way to Well, at the moment, all we're doing is we're headed for what we call Donahue's Rock. We left the nine pin, we're headed for Donahue's Rock, and we're seeing what water change as we come through, and we're going out to about 180. Yeah. And so we're just generally taking a change. Then, um, obviously, the most comfortable way to do, uh, to go, uh, fishing, if you're going uphill, is to just quarter the waves yeah. so that uh, you make it reasonably comfortable. And um, if you're coming downhill, I like to still quarter the waves a little bit as long as you're not getting pushed around too much, um, just to make the downhill ride last a bit longer. So this is a Tiagra 80Y, we've got it on a 37 kg rod. We've already got our skippy, which is in the tuna tubes, ready to be our switch bait as soon as we see a marlin come up. Uh, we've got a few teasers out, so yeah, we're ready to roll. Tackle tips and tactics, brought to you by Hunting and Fishing. Today I'd like to talk to you about Suffolk's Wind On Leader. This is particularly useful if you're like me, fishing for marlin out of a stabber craft, or you're shorthanded on a game boat. While your boatman's at the side of the boat dealing to your marlin, you can be simply winding onto your Tiagra, easy as. For all your fishing needs, head down to your local hunting and fishing store. Coming up, we hook into something. Could it be what we came here for? We're backing up on it now. Hoping for a marlin. See you in a minute. This week, on ADOS Addicted to Fishing, we're in the Bay of Islands with legendary skipper Jeff Stone, hunting for the elusive marlin. Right, so a beautiful Tiagra here started to hemorrhage. We're hoping it's going to keep going. Could be, could be a marlin. Okay, lean forward a bit. Lean forward so you're taking, no, le yeah, just lean the foot down. Okay, just start whining. <laughs> we're not getting much traction, so I put the... No, just making sure we're hooked up, that's all. I think it's a shark of some sort, or oh, fair way back. Okay, we're going to back up to it and see what happens. We're just backing up on it now. Could be a shark. Hoping for a marlin. See you in a minute. Yeah, no. Shark. Shark. And a small one. Well, 
What sort of size do you reckon that that marker was? Oh, uh, it's uh, about 60 kilos. 60? Yeah. Nice, nice. So we just hooked up to what we thought was a marlin, but it turned out to be a mako. Um, it was a bit of good practice for me. How, how do you think I went on the uh, on the chair there? Oh, just 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 perfect, <laughs> like a seasoned professional. <laughs> yeah, no, so, it, was, uh, no, it didn't really um, do anything uh, particularly dramatic itself. So uh, I hope you noticed how I screamed and yelled and. <laughs> I <laughs> swore at everybody. Um, yeah, we're going to have to beep all of that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does, doesn't uh, pay to get too excited because if you do that, you just confuse everybody anyway. Yeah, exactly. If somebody just does something wrong, you go, oh, bugger. Yeah, <laughs> and that's it. Exactly. But nobody, nobody did anything wrong. Paul had a nice tug of war on the uh, trace with the fish. On yeah. The, and then, of course, a shark with nylon leader. It's always going to get off, but you'll notice in the, hopefully it's come out, the, the circle the, hook was yeah. right in the corner of the mouth and uh, the, the, the shark will work that fish, that, um, that hook out of there. So we've caught them, uh, caught Marcos with up to five hooks, five long line hooks in their mouths, so uh, one, one little uh, piece of face jewellery <laughs> won't affect it too much. For now, the marlin will remain elusive, but Jeff has something that he would like to show me. All I need to do is catch another one of those skipjack tuna. Cool, thanks. Just hooked up to Skippy. Just trying to get some more baits because we're continuing to go on our marlin mission. Just been trolling. Some little lures with little little skirts with little hooks out the back. Just started up the tuna tubes. This is all feeling very fishy. Alright, here it comes. It's darting around. Big. That's a big boy. Yeah, too big, eh? So what we've been doing recently, we've been making some sashimi out of skipjack. As Kiwis, we normally think that skipjack's not very uh, palatable. But we've had um, Brazilians and other clients on board who can't understand us just using it as bait. So um, we started serving it up a couple of, oh, just this season, and um, a lot of the clients are really enjoying it. And don't ask me, because I don't like fish, so it doesn't matter much. The big secret is we're going to take as much of the red meat out as possible. It's pretty wasteful, but um, it seems to work. So when we caught this skippy, we bled it straight away, get as much of the blood out as possible. So it's all the dark meat is really in there. You're gonna get this bloody meat out of here. But you, just because we bled it so efficiently and by cutting its tail, cutting its head, cutting behind its pectoral fins at least, and getting it in the bait tank to bleed out, we've chin chilled it down and we've got rid of a huge amount of that really, really dark meat. So there we go. So this is stage three. Oops. I'm going to wash it. Then we're going to put that back in the freezer to chill right down again. And that going back in the freezer is stage four. Then stage five is chopping it up and eating it. So you'll be able to do that in about uh, half an hour. Skipjack tuna here in New Zealand is not considered as a prized table fish. But when prepared correctly, it is an amazing tasting fish that every fisherman should try. It's 
been a long, hard day's fishing. All was not lost. I was able to tag and release my first Marco shark, and I got to spend some time in one of New Zealand's pristine fishing environments, the Bay of Islands, with a true fishing legend, Jeff Stone. So it's been a great day out in the water. I can't say that I've ever uh, tagged a Marco before today, so thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. It was nice, nice to get a Marco. It would be nice to get an elusive marlin, but uh, that's, that's, that's game fishing, you know. You put your gear out and uh, you take what the, the fishing gods give you. Next time a broad bull. Yes, let's, let's do that. I'm yeah. going to hold you to that. Okay. <laughs> we'll definitely be looking you up next time we come back to Russell. See you again next week on ADOS Addicted to Fishing. Gear, Care and Catch, brought to you by Tradezone. When we're out fishing in our stabber craft, it feels really safe. It's almost as if we're floating around inside of a life jacket. But just in case, we've got our safety grab bag. It floats, it's easy to access if an emergency does arise, and it's got everything that you need, like a handheld VHF, flares, everything. So we'll be wearing our Hutchwalko life jackets, which have personal locator beacons attached to them. If anything happens, you can activate it and the authorities will be notified of your emergency. Gear, Care and Catch, brought to you by Tradezone. ADOS Addicted to Fishing adventures in confidence in our stabby craft, powered by Mercury Marine, and we tow it around in our Photon Tunland. Hunting and fishing supply us with our Shimano Tackle, we find the best fishing spots with our Furuno, we celebrate our catch with a wild buck, we keep up to date with Fishing News magazine, and it all sticks together thanks to ADOS. Want to come fishing with me in beautiful Niue? Visit divefishsnow.co.nz for details.